and then I'm going to share my screen, which is obviously decided to do very slowly, um, just because it matters. <laughs> Right, does that look like your presentation? No. Oh, that does, yes. Good. That does. Excellent. Okay. Um, well, well, there you go. I will, so, and I didn't even introduce myself. So um, I'm Amanda Allard. I'm Assistant Director at the Council for Disabled Children, and I am the, the bossy facilitator for this session. <laughs> I am going to hand over to the very lovely presenters. Thank you very much, Amanda. Ably done. Very well done. Um, so, yes, everybody, welcome to uh, this workshop, second workshop. Um, the Manchester Early Years Ordinarily Available Provision, Improving Early Years Send Provision Across Manchester. So we'll do some introductions and uh, then crack on with the presentation. So I am Nula Finnegan and I am a Senior School Quality Assurance Officer for SEND, not 25 years across Manchester, and that's from an education point of view. Leslie? I'm Leslie Rudd. I'm an Early Year Senior Quality Assurance Officer. Donna? And I'm Donna Griffin and I manage the outreach service for ch um, children with spe special educational needs, not to five years. And Jordan, unfortunately, has uh, commitments, uh, but Jordan is um, a core member of our Manchester Parent Carer Forum and leads on our working together uh, with parents and carers. So that's us. So um, if you can move to the first slide, thank you. Um, so I'll just turn my camera off. You don't need to see me. Right, so we're going to go through our Manchester context. We'll uh, talk about our challenges, our strengths. We'll talk about the matching provision to need tool, which is quite a key document in our early years um, ordinarily available provision. The action learning set that we um, succeeded in getting involved with, with the Council for Disabled Children. The actual document that we ended up writing. Um, next steps and the benefits of actually conducting this work. So we're going to cover all of that in, oh, I don't know, it took us a bit longer than last time. Okay, can you have the first slide, please? Let's get on with the Manchester context. Thank you. So Manchester, densely populated city, very busy, one of the most populous, I think it's the sixth populous area in the UK, sorry, second most populous urban area in the UK, it's the third most visited city in the whole of the UK after London and Edinburgh, who knew? Um, but it is a busy city, we have, um, we have an, our disability plan, our Manchester disability plan, which um, is a pledge by Manchester City Council to um, challenge attitudes, to remove barriers, to develop accessible services so that people with disabilities can be fully integrated into all aspects of the life of the city. That is a huge ask, um, really, but that is an aspiration of the city. Um, we also um, have a social model of disability in Manchester, that it's socially constructed and created or certainly made worse by physical or organisational and attitudinal barriers. So that might be about transport, if transport, uh, if buses are not um, disability welcome, if they don't lower, if they don't have wide, um, wide enough seating areas and so on and so forth. It's right across the board trying to make universal services more disability friendly so that our citizens with disabilities can, as, as the aspiration is, fully integrate. It is, however, a city that is growing at a rate of knots. Uh, we have an average annual growth rate of 0.73%, and that's been fairly steady since 2015. And in fact, our population has grown by 97,162 since 2015. That's quite phenomenal. 
We have um, the Children's Hospital, which is the centre of the Northwest for uh, children's uh, health. We have several universities. People come for all sorts of reasons. People also come and go. So we have several universities and students will come and, of course, leave. So high mobility. Um, we have high levels of deprivation and safeguarding. And of course, that comes with the territory ha of having a dense population, um, which, of course, puts uh, pressure on services. However, another Manchester context is that we have improved landscape in early year settings, 96% of Professor at Ofsted. We have an increased school population. We have several hundreds arriving in the city over the summer expecting school play for September, which is quite difficult. So we have increased capacity, free schools, academies, building. We have our existing special schools extending and increasing capacity. So the context is that Manchester is a vibrant, growing uh, city, um, ever growing, ever increasing with a large population who, of course, need services and support. Can I have the next slide, please? And, it, and that is a challenge, increased population, increased um, pressure on services. And for our purposes here, that means an increased number of children needing um, provision across the board, but particularly in the early years. We have um, another challenge in terms of the quality of that provision that we provide. So there are various levels of inclusion across the city. We have big chains, we have independents, we have childminders, we have something like up to 500 early years providers across the city. Um, and inclusion and uh, that quality provision is different. It's partly a financial consideration. Um, having a big chain may mean you have uh, more money to allow staff to be trained or to go and visit other settings to, to um, improve their uh, provision. But also there's something about attitude, there's something about um, ethos, there's something about um, the, about differing expectations. What is the responsibility for our early years settings around inclusion? What does provision look like? Um, and is the responsibility the same across all early years providers? Now, we, we know that it's not consistent across Manchester's settings. We know that. But what, how do we manage manage that that's a, a challenge for us um, we know that for instance school readiness is different um, across either early year settings our pvis private and voluntary and independent sector compared to our school nurseries um, that is a real challenge we know that um, we have the the challenge of supporting families and children who have complex needs. So families, for instance, international new arrivals who come to the city because perhaps they've heard that uh, we do special needs very well there, or perhaps they've come looking for work or a safe environment. These families may suffer trauma. The trip to uh, Manchester may have been uh, very difficult. There may be mental instability or mental un unwellness. They may be living with uh, substance abuse issues. They may be looking for jobs. They may have children, several children who are looking for school places, low income or no income. So that's quite a complex scenario for many of our families. And thrown into that mix is a, a child or two children or more with additional needs, an SEN may be only one factor in a very, very complex scenario for those families. So there are challenges in a big city, or well, there's some of our challenges. So we looked at our strengths then, so over to Donna to outline our strengths. I'm unmuted now. Hi, it's Donna. Um, I'm gonna go through some of the strengths. So one of our strengths in Manchester is early identification. And this can only be achieved by integrated working with, with, with services together. And again, I think one of the strengths is that we, we work in the early years, we work with health, education, early years, social care, um, families, and to, to look at the best outcomes for children. Um, we work with early help and the Sure Start centres so that families are, are, are accessing provision near their home. Um, as much as they can um, and in the integrated approach we're improving outcomes for children and families reducing inequalities um, 
in in the areas of learning and opportunities and parenting skills and we have big aspirations for our children um and we can't do that without integrated work and and, and that is one of the strengths how do we do it so one of the things that we we have we have um sessions joint sessions from very very early on with health and we the two i'll describe two of them one of them is that we have a let's play sensory session that we we run jointly with physiotherapy um allowing parents to meet other parents that's for children who have got severe and complex needs and usually functioning under six months um whether they're one two three or four um and what it allows is that we've got parents meeting parents to support each other from a very very early 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 age but also that um services a meeting and having the same outcomes for the child and the family um in in a, in a safe space the other one that we do that we've, we've run for quite a while is, is part of the pathway for children with down syndrome we, we run a, a joint session with speech and language therapy and um, been running for about 10 years now and again that that session allows families and services to come together and meet and and provide a service in in one space they're not they're not they're not going to two or three different appointments um but also parents have got each other to support each other from a very early age as well usually the children are under one when we when we support them to access this this provision um the other thing that we've got to be doing integrated the early year send pathway which is a, um, a provision it, it's 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 worked with clock, um, together with early years send um, education psychology the sen team in manchester early years settings um, and what it does it we provide a process where it's fair and equal for all children one of the things that that again is a need in manchester are parents who don't have a voice um, and part of what the early years send pathway will do is provide a voice for those children for those families some families have got a voice and they, and they will get um their needs met but the the, um, the early ascend pathway has gives a fairness to to support in manchester for children with early year um, in the early years so if a, if a parent comes through we have a process where we can discuss with that parent um, and say at the moment it's not the right time to have an education health and care plan but what we can do is provide this support um, and that's available for for you in the early years early years um whether it's funding or whether it's information and advice whether it's um, a lead for your setting and um, just to show that they, there is a, there is a thing being put in place before an education health and care plan because one of the difficulties in manchester is that quite early on parents are told that they need an education health and care plan to get support and we're trying to show parents and settings and services that there's a different way and we'll provide support without that that they can get into school a child can get into school and have their needs met um, and that the education health and care plan if it comes eventually is the right document for them at that point the other thing that we do yeah um is that work closely with parents and, and we'll go on to, to talk about the the, the document uh, but one of the things that drives us is what parents making sure that we are following what parents need um, and their voices in everything that we do and that's another strength for us is that we often will ask parents and they'll they'll challenge us um, and they'll support us and we'll do the same with each other as services and I think that's a big strength is the support and challenge that we have of working together okay should we move on to the matching provision to need tool Mula? yeah I think this is me okay uh, <clears throat> when we decided to do the action learning set and we eventually decided to look at ordinarily available provision, we looked at what we first had in place. <clears throat> One of our strengths was the document that we use called the Matching Provision to Need Tool, um, catchy title. Uh, it's been around and embedded in practice now for at least 10 years. Um, a document that is not a tool for assessment, um, but rather a guide to assist with decision making. Um, so decisions about a child's primary need and when to look for and seek specialist advice or access, access more specialist support or even when to look for local authority statutory assessment. Um, so if we just move to the next slide. Okay. 
here is um, a sample page from our matching provision to need tool. So you can see that um, we've got three very broad strokes, three boxes, three broad strokes, and typical development in the first box, indicators that might give you cause for concern as a practitioner in the second box, and significant indicators that we know that this child really needs some um, additional support as soon as possible. So they're the three um, boxes that we use. Just for people really, it's a check back. It's not meant to be an assessment tool. Children aren't supposed to meet directly needs in each of the boxes, but it is for those practitioners who are a little bit hesitant about what we're doing with this child. Uh, do we need to get additional support for this child? It's a check back system for them. And it complements other early years um, tools that we use. So at the moment, we those of you who work in the early years, you'll know that development matters and the EYFS are being updated from 2021. So at the moment, school nurseries are using the new documents um, and they're the early adopters, but we'll all be using that by 2021. And the new document has sort of taken away all of the fine detail of developmental stages. And it's a much broader um, level of development now. So we'll be looking at birth to three. So we're looking at between birth and three, how does a child develop? So we're not going to be tracking children in the same way in such a minutia of detail. And we won't be logging all of that. We want to take some of the workload off practitioners as far as paperwork, etc. And we are relying on practitioners to know the children well and to know where they are developmentally and what their next steps are. Now, we know that all not all practitioners maybe at that level where they have this deep understanding of child development. So that does concern some of us. Um, so other documents like the matching provision to need tool, we feel are going to complement the new development matters even more so than the one that we had before, because it's going to be there to reassure and just for guidance and to be a checkpoint for those practitioners who are not quite sure about children's development. So let's do the next slide. Okay, so that's me. Can you hear me? Am I on? Yeah. Excellent. Okay, so the action learning set was uh, and the our starting point for the action learning set was a matching provision to need to. We didn't know that at the time. We applied for an action learning set for early support care children and we thought that would be looking at the local offer website in our smugness we thought we've got everything in place that we need we've got the paperwork we've got all these uh, services all this joint working it's going to be marvelous and we've got the matching provision to need to huh, we have it um we just need to titivate our website and make it look gorgeous um and then philippa stops and chris webb came um for our first meeting to find out where we were up to and to shape our project and um, Philippa asked, is there anything that sets out your expectations of good years in early years and provision? And of course, we waived our lovely matching provision to need to. And um, actually, when we read it, with that gentle support and challenge from Philippa and Chris, um, we realised that what it does is describe need. It helps you to identify and helps you to spot when things aren't quite development developmentally where they should be but it didn't say anything else um it there was nowhere that did it say so what so what did this child has this difficulty and how then can we expect consistency across our earlier settings and consistency of quality or expectation if we as a local authority or earlier services don't, don't clarify what we mean by that. What does good practice look like for a little one going to an earlier settings with additional needs? What does a parent expect for their child who, to be fair, is still within that developmental process? What should it look like? So what they've got additional needs? So what they have a little bit of trouble holding a pencil? What do we do about it? And that's really when our journey changed and when our journey started and when we realised that 
we're talking about good practice full stop across the range. So that was our springboard, realising that we had a massive gap to fill. Over to you, Leslie. OK, so what we did was we brought together initially a group of professionals, a, a huge range of, of people who works with, worked with children with additional needs in the early years. Um, and Nula pulled together a large group of people who were very enthusiastic um, about pulling this document together. Um, and we remained on board throughout the process. We enjoyed the process and everybody um, carried it through, really. Um, the first challenge that we realised we had was where is our starting point? What will we focus on? This is going to start off as a bit of a pilot. We can't really look at the whole development developmental range of naught to five. This is this is huge. We're looking at every um, type of development. So we decided to choose um, an, an age range that we felt was most relevant. And really that was based on advice from health and from our PVI, our private voluntary independent um, childcare providers. So we started with the age of two, um, mainly because the healthists do their ASQ, their ages and stages questionnaire at the age of two. In the settings, we do our two year progress checks under the EYFS. And also we follow the welcome language pathway, the language screening, which we do at two. So this was showing lots and lots of needs of children at the age of two. So we thought here is a good starting point. We've identified lots of children with delaying development at the age of two. So that's why we started there. So we went off into working parties to look at each area of SEND, um, and we answered the question, what do we think good practice looks like? And we divided into working parties that we um, deliberately made as multi-agency initially as we could, because we didn't want physios to look at physical development and speech and language therapists to look at speech and language development. We wanted to have a really good range of different people looking at different things. Let's do the next slide. Sorry. That's okay. Have I gone too far there? Uh, it's not, I've not got the next one up yet. Uh, sorry, that one? That, that's the one. Okay. Yeah, so um, I think we might have actually gone back a slide there. I'm so, oh, you're right. <laughs> it's right. I'm sorry, this is awful slide um, driving. So so, um, so you've done that one, haven't you? And you need the next one. Is that right? Yeah, I think I think I was on that one. <laughs> you just go back one. That one. That's the one. That's it. That's it. That's it. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, as working parties, we went off and identified needs and um then we had to decide what we're doing next. I'm just going to jump forward a few points there to um, the support and challenge we had from Philippa and Chris from um, the CDC, because at this point we couldn't have moved forward without them refocusing us and bringing us back to what we were supposed to be doing. Our working parties have gone off into different tangents. What we came back with were documents that looked different, sounded different. The language that we used was very different, different acronyms. So we really had to refocus and pull things together again. So that's what we did at that point with help from Philippa and Chris. Uh, the other thing that we really realised at this point that we needed um, was to ask the people who were going to be looking at and using the document to really pull it to pieces and help us with it. Uh, we couldn't go any further without um, knowledge of the, from those people who were going to use the document. And we didn't want to just... Um, pay lip service really to that we really wanted to get those people on board and to really hear what they had to say so um I had just luckily delivered the DFE and Nason um, Early Year Senko Award to a group of Early Year Senkos. They had just completed the course, just passed. They were extremely knowledgeable and keen at this point. So I dragged them all back again and said, would you do a workshop with us and really look at this document and tell us what you think of it? 
um, and they did. <laughs> and I think because they were they were keen and comfortable with each other because they'd done a whole course together and comfortable with me, and um, they didn't hold back. They told us exactly what they thought. They told us what they thought about the developmental levels that we'd targeted in there that we thought children should be at and our expectation of them um, and they had much higher aspirations for our children than we did which was just lovely to see and lovely to turn on its head and have another look at um, and I, I, I always say this but I think because often when you work with children with SEND you can lower your expectations and aspirations for children and um, so they they helped us to look at that in a different way and we really should be stretching our children um, and, and, and not putting a ceiling level on their development. So we did a lot of that. We did a lot of talking about um, how we help children on to the next steps. And from that, we decided that we needed another section to our document around resources because the Senkos were sharing so many fantastic ideas about what they did with children to support their development. Um, just everyday, ordinary targets that they were doing with resources that they already had, wonderful things that they did. We didn't want it to go to waste. So we wanted that to be in the document under resources. So we did that as well. Um, similarly with parents, we didn't just want um, parents to just, we didn't want them just to agree, nod heads. We really wanted their input genuinely to pull the document to pieces and to have some input into this. Um, so we used our Manchester Parent Carer Forum um, and we did have um, Jordan, who's our representative from there, here earlier, but unfortunately he's now had to go. He's got care and responsibilities. Um, but he did very clearly say that we were welcoming as a group and we did ensure that we had parents at meetings, every meeting that we came to, that parents were there. And not just the parent carer forum representatives, but parents of children who have SEND just generally please come along and tell us what you think. And they did. And we couldn't have moved forward without us saying, tell us how this makes you feel. Tell us if this wording is appropriate. Tell us if you feel that this would support your child. Um, and it was really, really helpful. So all of these things together um, and the work that we put in was so worth it. And it really did shape and change um, how the document looked. Moving on. Right. It's me now, isn't it? So, so that's what we did. So the document. So as Leslie was saying, we discussed lots and lots of discussions. We identified who was going to drive it and we agreed it should be settings and parents. Um, we found that it was essential to have an overview and to explain the approach and the ethos. Um, so we're all coming from the same ethos that, that this was a right for the children. This, is, this was the practice that was all in place um, in your setting and this was good practice. Um, and then we um, looked at each development stage and broke down steps. We identified activities, strategies and resources to support both practitioners and the child. Um, and we did that, as Leslie was saying, by settings themselves, telling us what they were already doing and what, um, and building a picture of what was going, across, going on across the city. Um, and then we reviewed and we planned and we discussed again um, what things meant to us and came to a common understanding because I think that was the big thing of, of, of people's understanding of different different um, words and meanings and acronyms um, and made sure that we were all in agreement that that was what that meant for Manchester um, and eventually we discussed more <laughs> and we came we, we came to a point where we had a document a document that 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 provided support um, strategies and activities um, to increase a child's opportunities in the setting and to, and to help support and develop our earlier settings in Manchester. Um, it's a working document. And if you look at the, um, you can find it at the moment, it's on, it's on Early Help Manchester and it's on the um, Parent Care Forum website as well. It's still in draft form and we've got other things that we want to do with it and we're going to review with it. I'm sure Leslie and and Nuala will tell you a little bit about the review in a minute. Um, I'm going to show, do you want to move to the next page of the sample page. There's a sample page of the document. Yeah. And then, so what we've done is tried to have a background and an overview of what we mean by physical and medical. Um, if you want to go to the next page as well, please. 
and then in the document is broken down that's how we've, we've done it so this is just a, a it's a snapshot of 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 a page there's lots and lots of information on there lots of um places where they can they can di be directed to for additional support um so as i said it's a working document and we're going to review it in october half term um and that's it it complements all of the doc documents, so it doesn't replace anything. So it's not going to replace the um, the stuff that that the setting is doing. It's to complement what they're already doing. So the, let's we go to the next one. So next steps. So again, like I said, working document. We're going to review and refine it. Um, we're going to at the, this year we're going to do a action learning set um, and be supported around transition. So we want to build in a section on transition. We want to build in a section of working with parents and carers. Um, and we also want to want to look at a targeted section and also a specialist section. Um, so it's still at the very beginning of what we're doing, but it's a document that it's a, it's, it's a document that we can all work with. Let's go to the next one. Hi, that's me. We just wanted to uh, explain what the benefits were um, of doing this piece of work. We were able to acknowledge the good practice that was already in place because there is a heck of a lot of good practice across our early years settings. In our early years peer review challenge that happened at uh, the beginning of last year or mid last year, it highlighted the good practice, but it said that in Manchester there's um, a lack of platforms or opportunity to share good practice. So this was it really. We we collated all that and put it into this document. We had the right people involved all the way through. Some people dipped in and dipped out, but we had health visitors, occupational therapists, physiotherapists, parents, of course, but parents of children with autism, parents of children with profound and multiple learning disabilities. And they were able to say what they would expect. It was really important that parents were able to say, when I took my child to a setting, I thought this is going to happen. And in fact, this happened. Sometimes it was good. Sometimes it wasn't so good. But we needed to hear that. We needed to hear those stories and those experience, experiences so that this became a meaningful document and wasn't just, as we've said before, uh, paying lip service to something, not just a tick box. It had to be real and meaningful. And the, the sample page that you saw there is simply a sample page, a part of a page, the, the pages go on and on um, because it's packed with detail, packed with resources and links where you can get other help. So we were able to collate all that. That was a real benefit. And um, I'm not understating it when I say that we actually enjoyed working together. It really was good to get all these people in a room together and to thrash out quite honestly what we wanted for our children and parents who felt very comfortable to say no you got that wrong that isn't going to work this is what I wanted to see um, and we actually formed a really good bond actually with, with working together and now I know that I can uh, email any one member of that group with information about this piece of work and people are passionate and they will get back to me and they'll give me links and they'll share um, and it was really good and I think we set a really strong foundation for our next piece of work on transition. We also learned that there needs to be more interactions and collaborative work across agencies. Some people who we gathered together hadn't been in a room together or hadn't been for a long time uh, working together and that's it's really important to keep those links going. And it just reinforced our acknowledgement that work with parents um, is a must. You can't do pieces of work like this without having parents on board. Um, and not just, again, not just people sitting there nodding or shaking or ticking boxes. They have to have an input. They have to tell us that word doesn't work or I don't understand that. What does that mean? Um, so that it makes our work better and more accessible to everyone. And we are very proud of the work we've done. You know, we're not all from Manchester. I'm certainly not from Manchester, but we're proud that people pull together like this. And there, we really did work as equals. Whoever we were, whatever our background, um, we worked together um, and our input was valuable. So that was really important. And of course, this is ultimately for settings and for parents. Parents will be able to look at this document and say, 
Um, I have a child with additional needs. I thought I was going to get this and have a look at the document. Yes, it says here that's a universal provision. And it was interesting at the beginning of this afternoon to hear uh, the talk about the SEND code of practice having quite a focus on education, health and care plans at that very extreme specialist level, when actually we need to have a focus on what does universal look like, especially for little children who are still developing, what should universal be? What should uh, any child be able to access? And I think we've started that journey. We've got that uh, encapsulated in this document. As Donna says, it is a pending piece of work and we've got more to do, but it was enjoyable. And uh, we're quite excited about it. Thank you very much for listening. That's us finished. So if you've got any questions or comments, I think we'll unmute. And um, because there are only a few of us, dive in. Ask away. Has anyone got questions? Or it'd be really interesting as well to hear whether you've done something similar or if having heard it, you're planning to go off and do something similar. Hi, Cathy. You look like you might be prepared. Yeah. To it, looks really, it looks really good and it's, it's really interesting. And I think the trouble is that we're all maybe doing similar things and it's how we learn from each other's the thing, isn't it, as well? Because it looks, it looks really, really good. Thank so you. Just, I'm just trying to think how we do it sort of on a wider platform. <laughs> Whether what works in Wolverhampton would work in Manchester uh, and the other way around. Mm. Definitely. And I have a link with uh, Wolverhampton. That's interesting because I'm a Brummie. Well, I'm, I'm a Mancunian. <laughs> Um, well, we actually did look at websites. We looked at, uh, I think Plymouth has a very good um, ordinarily available provision. We we scoured other local authorities and we got copies of, of um, documents. And it's interesting to see that some of some bits worked, but many bits didn't. But we were able to glean what would work for us. So that's that, that's a really good point. That um, some things do translate well, but not everything. But that's that was what we did. We looked at what was already available. So that might be something for yourselves. I'd be interested because Kathy, were you one of the? Did Wolverhampton um, take part in the action learning set as well? We did, yes, but it wasn't. This it wasn't this specific area that we're looking at we're looking more at um sort of definitions data and other parts of the working together it, it wasn't so much around the, this sort of provision side of it as well but actually doing the learning sets in itself was really helpful of bringing people together good 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 I, and I'm sure that Philippa will be doing something to sort of just share that learning across all of the sites because it sounds like some amazing stuff has come out of it and uh, I, I will give you excellent feedback guys. So um, Zoe, we had we had a, another colleague from from Kent and, and Medway on earlier on. Um, so it, it's, it's, are you doing a lot of thinking about early years at the moment as part of your WSOA work? Zoe. Oh, sorry, Amanda, I couldn't find the um, unmute button. <laughs> um, so, um, as you probably know, so we, um, I'm Sue's deputy. So, um, Sue took over Kent at uh, Medway originally, and then Kent a short time after. So, they now encompass, we look at it as one, but we still kind of work with them quite separately. Um, so we're all part of, so myself, who's one of our deputies, and Matt, who's our other deputy, and Sue herself, we're kind of all divided, but we're all in different stages of um, what we are doing. Now, currently, um, the ordinarily available provision uh, by Kent has, was pretty much developed by the time Sue was there, and there's been some input into that. Um, so I haven't had much input in with that, um, and but I know my colleague Matt, who kind of oversees Medway a lot more, they are still really in in the throes of um, developing that and putting that all together, and that isn't quite done yet. So um, yeah, he if he was on this call, he could probably be a lot more informative than me. But um, but yeah, so um, in Medway, yes, um, Kent, it's 
practically done and um, I'm not part of that work stream um, but I know Sue's had an influence over that so I can't be t I, I wanted to come to this to just get an idea we wanted to all cover between all three of us cover all the different workshops so um, I can feed back what's been going on because it looks really really interesting. Good, good. And I do think it's one of those things where I think to some extent, if you're, you know, what I took from the presentation or one of the things that I took from the presentation was the fundamental importance of co-production, you know, both with, with with your professionals, but also with your parents. So I think there's to some extent you can't take what somebody else has done and simply sort of plonk it down. But actually taking what somebody else has done might actually, you know, you've then at least got an Aunt Sally, haven't you? And you're not starting with a blank sheet of paper and maybe you can take out some of the steps in the process and maybe speed things up. So I just think it's so important and that. So and great to share these documents. So we'll make sure that um, the, the presentation uh, with the links is shared alongside um, the recording, um, which would be absolutely great. Have we got any more questions or anything that anybody else wants to share or something that you guys wish that you'd said as part of the presentation? I think um, just to emphasise, as you say, the importance of parents as equal partners on a piece of work like this, that was that was absolutely crucial. And we and if a parent wasn't able to make the workshop, then we would say the phrase, and I can hear Leslie saying this in my head, what would a parent say about that? Would a parent understand that? What would they take from that? So that had to be the golden thread that ran through it really, and that was for all services. Um, and it was important that we were really clear about what we wanted settings to do. Otherwise, how can we challenge? That was- I think, I think also, I think it's quite timely as well, because I know since September, and I know in the new, Word, um, world of COVID and post COVID, that that budgets are going to be tighter, um, mm. and I know already we've had settings who haven't got the staff that they had beforehand, and I think one of the things that it'll help us do is is to identify what is a budget problem and what is what is a, a, an SEN mm. problem. So yeah. I'm looking forward to to being able to say go go to go to your um your your, your document and see what's going on. Mm, that's true. Very true. Okay. Right. Well, I think we can probably just a couple of minutes ahead of schedule call this session to close. So I just wanted to say thank you so much uh, to Leslie, Donna, and Nula for a great presentation. And if you can say thank you to Jordan, and I can, I can um, confirm that for those of you in this session and not the previous one that he did indeed talk about how welcomed parents were <laughs> and he ran away <laughs> um, and and just that, that they they felt as though they were very equal partners so uh, that was that was really encouraging so um thank you to um uh, to you guys for presenting and uh, and to everybody else for attending and um uh, and yeah, and do not forget to do your evaluation form, which I've put in the chat. Thanks, Amanda, for the technical support and for keeping us uh, <laughs> on focus. Thank you very much. Not at all. Lovely to see you all. And you. Thank you. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye. 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 Right, that's it, I think. Right. Bye, everyone. Bye, Donna. Bye, Bye. 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 Thank you.